tired of being a scared b I said scared designer. I, I just have this thing where like some days I just feel like I want to challenge myself. I literally want to do a project right now and just end up with something that I know is not going to be fantastic, but no, I tried enough and I was like designer enough to give it a shot. So yeah, let's, let's, let's go make a poster. Also, as per usual, do not forget to check out the everything pack. It's the first link in the description down below where you basically all my products, all custom made products by me on my self I page right now, literally all of them on one purchase plus all future products for free, no matter the price forever. So let me just introduce you some of the ideas that I kind of have cooking in my head that I want to at least try to put into some kind of framework that'll hopefully make some sense. Now, first things first is this really cool poster over here. This Devin book. Booker, Mikel, let me not pretend I know these names. I know Devin Booker, but like, I, I don't know sports. I, I, I'm surprised. But I really enjoyed the double exposure idea that's going on here. I just kind of like felt that just felt like a non-intrusive way to add some texture and just it felt really calm, right? Now the typography on this second example is just really dope. And also the actual shadowing on the overall face just felt like I, I know I don't know how to do that. I know I how to do it but I don't actually practice it. This over here, the third poster here, I just enjoyed the typography. It just felt very much so like energetic and the way you kind of like move in between the smaller text and the bigger text. The fourth concept, I just enjoyed the overall composition, the lighting effects, the, the, the breathing space, it just felt very just, just calm, you know? And then the last poster, I really actually enjoyed the, the, the overall size of the background photo and that like red hue and like how dark the atmosphere is around it. And then and this sort of like transition between double exposure and the on, the on the bottom chest meets like seeing the face on the top. Realistically, many of these things I know maybe how to do, but I've never tried enough to maybe even say that I know how to do it. You feel me? Now, obviously I have my person already to go high quality as well. And if you guys just don't happen to watch these videos enough, to get some high quality photos, you type your person in or your object, you go on the top right, advanced search, through that advanced search, change your image size to two megapixels or more. Click on the big blue button on the bottom again, and then you got yourself some really nice high quality photos. Now, given this scenario though, I need to of course cut this guy out first. Let me do that at least. Little select subject, then we got homeboy over here selected as well. I gotta just press Q on my keyboard, take my nice brush, and with a nice black brush, I'll fill it in. So that way the selection is saying, I do not want this. Ooh, oh, I, okay, so I, I guess I gotta fix the shirt too. I am at least considering the idea between this being like really, really big, using that double exposure idea. I don't know how or what I'm gonna do with the double exposure and then added another picture that hopefully some way or another looks cool and then photo manipulate something. Trust the process. I that's all I'm going to say. Given this scenario, the other picture I have is this, this little slam dunk photo. Now this might be a little bit more complicated to select subject. Let's see. Naturally, uh, I got to do a little bit of fixing and honestly, it wasn't that bad. Besides the part where my eyes were just watering uncontrollably. Let's just, let me just at least bring you guys to what I'm thinking about right now for a second. So what I am considering is I'm going to take this poster here, right? And with this poster, I'm going to realistically have most of the chest be some kind of faded different environment than this. So whether if that's some kind of like fiery environment, cause I think red and orange or orange and blue look good, Jesus. Okay. So, and also he has orange shoes, so it helps out. So some kind of fiery thing happening over here and through the transition from point A to point B. So this is A and B. I'm, I'm of course going to smooth it out, but I'm wondering if there's something else I can do. I'm like scared. Cause I realize that it's not going to be easy. So at least first things first, maybe I'm gonna just kind of like move this around. I'm gonna take some duplicates of this and I wanna kind of quickly just clip mass to see what I am working with. I might have to erase this corner here a little bit. I can erase this over here, like I said before, keep that foot in the foreground and figure out some kind of environment, some kind of fiery universe that might work. Like this, ooh. I mean, this is a terrible photo. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, wow, shit's burning. <laughs> That's pretty decent. So what I'm kind of thinking is how this person transitioned between, you can just kind of ignore all of this for a second. The background is what I want you to focus on for a second, where the actual head is. You can see that this is actually not his jersey. This is some sort of lava-y environment that looks pretty freaking cool. And he had that really nice transition. He might hide a lot of it right through the canvas in the middle. I don't have that opportunity to hide it. So how do I make it just feel nice? And, and the realistic, realistically, I might just be able to just kind of just like erase it, right? But I also kind of want to make sure that we're getting the environment a little bit up here too. So I got this environment kind of idea. Now let's also figure out what the background might look like. It might be more of like a, maybe like an orangey kind of tone. Maybe the orange can come in with like actual other atmospheric fire. And this background is basically just black. So maybe I said to myself, okay, maybe not black, 
But it's like a black from this canvas here that's pretty dark and makes it feel as if something's happening there and that feels okay. I feel like I'm doing a lot of talking. When I'm talking a lot, I'm nervous. So I'm also trying to distract you from the idea that I don't know what I'm doing. Let me actually get some texture in here too. Let me actually throw in some of these photos into camera roll filter and just get some of the skin cleaned up in the sense of like uh, getting rid of any acne, if any, but also just making this, oh my, why did they do this a camera roll filter? It's so different. There's some science out there. The product manager's like, bro, trust me. I know what I'm doing. Oh my God, it's so weird having grain and texture in the same exact category. It's kind of nice though. Oh, that was someone ordering the everything pack. Actually two people, W. There's a few ways that I can actually use or do this color theory idea of like changing the tone. I think one of the ways that people would normally do it is something like this, just taking like a simple color filter and just throwing this up a little bit. Now, I think that's gonna work pretty well to kind of get some of these whites out of the way, but I'm curious if I wanna do, uh, do the other way of choosing curves, taking this little click right here, this little, uh, the part of the actual curve adjustment for the properties, hold alt, click auto. Then it brings up this little secret table, find lights and darks, take my shadows. We're gonna choose the shadows from the actual photo. Now, before I actually do that, I may have to bring this outside, but now I do it. Find lights and darks, change the shadows. We're gonna change the, the, the deepest of the blacks of the shadows inside this photo, which is kind of like a uh, bluish tint. Then take the highlights, which is more of this orangey kind of tone. Is it exactly how I want it to be? No. What if I just actually went into camera filter once again? And I'm sure someone has to be screaming at me about it because I didn't really think about it till just now either. But using actually the color grading method in here. Um, before I do that though, I kind of want to change the, the color balance, the white balance, right? That feels a little bit more kind of like, eh, yeah, 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 it feels better. Okay, now I can go to color grading, take the mid tones, just try to find ourselves a nice color of reddish tones, right? We're looking for for like these reddish orange tones. And yeah, see that's a lot better than the color filter theory. Although the curve's gone. I don't think that's necessary, but the photo filter that's over this still does add a little something that I don't think I can get without doing too much work in camera filter. So I this a little bit. What I'm trying to think of is how do we get some light in here? But I know before I even add light, how do we get more atmosphere in the background? Cause it's obviously literally just black, but there's something about the idea of actually taking what's happening in the foreground of the photo and applying it to the background. So what I'm saying is obviously there's a dunk going on. So the, the ball's already here. So it's kind of already in the, you know, it went from here to here, right? But what if there's some kind of impact that makes it feel like if there's like smoke shooting out from this, that way the, the background doesn't feel too random and has like a focal point and actually leads your eye towards something in the foreground. That's what I'm thinking, but can I make it work? Realistically, we can add some atmosphere like so and kind of like, oh, why is it? Why is the background going through it? Oh, this is at 90%. I don't actually hate that though. So the, the smoke, although it could be in the background and we can make it a little bit more like, just a little more, like a, a lot bigger. The reason why I'm making it bigger because I don't want it to feel like too much smoke. I want it to feel more like an atmosphere. I could also bring it to the front, hold alt, just like so. And then maybe take my little, uh, what is it called? Layer mask, right? Take my brush. Let me lower the opacity of it so I can click a few times to really make sure I can add some depth the way I really, really want to. Realistically, too, I can add a gradient map to this. Uh, whenever you're working with like recoloring something, you just make the first one black. You make the second one the actual color you want. So in this case, I want to be orange. You can click again on the orange, move it more close to the right just to get something else. Now, if the smoke is maybe less dense than it is, then it looks like this one is. You take your black now, you double click on this, and then you just add a tiny bit of hue to orange. And then you can slowly start moving it up and up and up. And then you might find yourself with something that you're looking for. Take this newer one now, put it above everything, and then add the smoke where I would like to add it. So it feels like now we're starting to add some texture to the world, but we're also kind of losing now the background and the foreground portion of it, I mean. We need to maybe come in now. We're gonna add a layer right below it. We're gonna take this for a second. And I'm gonna just quickly hold Alt and click on this. It'll basically show everything that's in this layer only. If you click Alt again, back on the eye, it'll open everything back up again. Now, what I wanna do with this, I just kinda wanna just pick a quick orange color and then just go around where these fires are and just kinda add some little like hits on the brush to make it glow in a second. Something like this, I think, linear dodge add. Now to make it feel a little more looser though, I'm gonna take my eraser, lower this opacity down, kind of just make it a little bit more atmospheric. I wanted to kind of make sure I kind of shape the light a little bit more. It was really muted in the back before, but now, boom, you add this light. Now we're getting somewhere and we're kind of feeling a little more thoughtful on the actual background there. Let's take this and I want to qu qu quickly check to see if I want to add a little bit of light just 
quickly coming out of this. I mean, for sure, it does kind of help a little bit, but I might flip it, change the color a little bit. So this is negative 12. This is where it was before. Maybe just give more of the atmosphere some different colors of orange, so it's just not the same flat reddish tones, like warmer tones. That feels kind of nice right there. Very subtle. But like, look how much it does for the form. Like the form just feels a lot better. We're gonna take this and we're gonna add literally just one big blast of orange and see what happens here. I'm gonna press Control U, lower the lightness down a little bit, increase the saturation, and we're gonna just test some blend modes and see if it kind of helps bring some color out. Usually what kind of works for this is like a linear dodge add. So the reason why I wanna do that though is add some more light. Um, I might even take this one and bring it above it again, right? Okay, oh, that might be a little overkill, but I'm feeling it. Now what I do is on this person here, new layer, clip and mask this. We can take our brush now with a nice, maybe like 40% hardness and do the same thing, but we're just adding their nice little light, basically a few centimeters or a few inches, uh, millimeters, right, right outside of this. But realistically now we're just adding that nice rim of light right around it, and uh, it'll look pretty good in a second once I'm done. Now with this, we make another new layer. We take it, clip mask it once more. We use the same exact color, but maybe a little bit darker. Make the brush a little bit less hardness, like a 20% or 10% is pretty decent. Now we just go over it once again, but this time with a linear dodge add involved, and we're gonna see a nice little glow start to happen and this is what we want now what you want to do is when you get a pretty good glow i feel like i have a pretty good glow on the base i'm gonna lower my opacity down to like 30 percent we're gonna make a new layer just in case i mess up do the same thing linear dodge add on this new layer though and with a 30 percent brush this time or even lower like a 23 right same color now we can go in and just click a few more times not nah, 23 is too much like a 13. now i can kind of go in here and just add a little bit more atmospheric light so that way it kind of doesn't feel like it just stops in one area. We want to make sure we kind of blend it from having a light, a nice hard light right on the edge, right? Right on the edge right here to a nice sort of like cascading light that kind of just feels like it's more just cascading through the actual object. If that made sense, good. If it didn't, I understand. That was terribly explained. Now I might just take this bottom photo for a second, rotate it to see if I can get a different look that might feel a little bit better. And I think that feels a little bit better. I think now it's probably time for me to do that on the guy on the background too. So I add a little bit of light on this arm right here. I'm just kind of figuring out how do I kind of save this background a little bit. I'm, I'm having second thoughts or struggles with the background overall because that's just normally what happens. I'm going to try to figure it out together. But maybe it's that I have to not focus on the background being elevated, but maybe what can I add to the foreground that can leak to the background that can add some texture to it everyone knows what these guys are right so if i take some of these flame sparks though real quick go above everything control v and kind of focus them in a second here on the bottom right put this on a linear dodge add it kind of helps i can maybe let me try and add a little more a nice little hack for you guys if you guys got a video of some flame works right i can literally just press my light shot or uh, your print screen program and just take it all and then I don't even have to download it because that's just, why would I do that? We can go again here, add some of these guys just like so. It doesn't look too good with them all being around there. So I might just kind of focus it around the top area here as like this way to emphasize or put some emphasis on the rim being like slam dunk, like boom, sparks, flames. That was fire is kind of what I'm thinking in my head. There's a part of me that wants to know of taking this image, putting it above everything, opening this up again to having the layer mask that I had before before, taking it again, deleting the bottom so it actually has the color from before, but then just taking this top side and kind of leaving this sort of like very obviously a race, but kind of faded thought. There's something about it being cut off that I'm not really sure of though. I'm not sure about that one. I'm really not sure about that one. And for those who uh, think I didn't use Jenner Fill, I totally tried. Just, eh, eh I ain't there yet. <laughs> now there's a part of me that just feels like I can save this design with like like the background in specific which is something really like a nice good typography layout you know what i mean is it weird that i got the bucks Well, like that's a deer right that's a buck whatever it anyway but like the the forest like his home is on fire that's kind of like it's kind of messed up nah i think about it <laughs> i think something like this will be kind of nice to get our nice selves a nice little white tone in there we can do that or we can do like maybe should we try green the green kind of also helps with the background or the foreground little flares and flickies Dude, I, mm, a part of me still thinks like this is better, but I know it's not. I'm gonna just kind of take this, add a nice little, just kind of erase on the bottom, you know? Maybe I can take a little duplicate for a second, put this back on so it's just fully there. Take a nice little stroke here, maybe. Smart object it, move it again like so, take it and then it kind of erase here. Maybe even now coming into here, let's add a little inner shadow. Can't do inner shadow because I erased. Instead, I'll make another duplicate above everything. Something like this. Now above everything, what if I add like a nice orange hit 
just for the text, like right there. It's kind of necessary. It's kind of not. I hate the tone of that color in there. Like maybe like that's a little bit better. The books logo is kind of throw me off in that one, but like this, this looks to me pretty decent. And maybe there's a world where I want to take it and kind of delete a little bit of this so that it kind of transitions a little bit smoother. There's, there's something still missing on the text part of it. I can probably just put his name and put the year, like an EST kind of little callback to however long he's been on the team. Or I can find a cool way to put his like name in it too, like the, the, his last name. If I do that though, I think there's gonna be a world where I'm actually gonna choose to uh, use a little different subtext for this stuff. I wanna put his name in there. I can put his name there or I can do like, I mean, I see the Nike logo there. It's a sponsor, no? Is that a Nike logo? I could just cheat myself out of this. Honestly, who complains about a Nike logo, right? It's almost like a cheat code. Could you imagine having a branding so just dope? The moment you add this logo, it just does something to it. But I can still go ahead and say to myself, I can add in some kind of type texture still. Nice little white. We can do like Milwaukee, number 34 maybe. Add his name, maybe even add his last name. And we can take some of this stuff and just add some simple little type texture over here. And I mean, it's looking decent. I mean, like last but not least, or at least some kind of like little final stuff I can do is I can add some, uh, what is it called? Blur gallery, iris blur. We take it, get a little blur moment going on here. I kind of like that shoe being blurred the way it is. We don't have to have such a high amount of blur though. Come back into here and just kind of erase around where it should not be, which this top half is completely irrelevant. On the bottom though, it feels really nice. Now we're at somewhere. So, but that blur kind of just really works for us down there. It feels nice, feels dope. Maybe a little saturation hit, maybe not on his face as much, but kind of down where it's all this heat's coming from. I do kind of enjoy the idea of maybe doing a nice combination of everything once again, going to some blur gallery for a second, bringing in my brush at like a 25% kind of just going in just adding these random waves of distortion as if the heat is kind of messing with us a little bit there's not much else I can do besides like if I want to go back and just change everything so I'm going to add a quick little just last little thing I'm going to just kind of go into some of these linear dodge add them and just make some of these kind of things just to, you know pop out a little bit and feel oh Let's just get rid of it. I want to call it. It's like an hour and 20 something minutes or whatnot. Uh, but for you guys, obviously, it's a lot shorter video. But I think for the most part, I think I got to a spot where I'm like, yeah, I'm done. While we take a look at this, with the, I'm hoping at least I accomplished what I was going for. I really wanted that transition from the bottom being an environment to the top being something in specific of like this, in this instance, a player. And then also having the environment itself kind of fill the background because that's my biggest struggle was the background itself. But I think the background was actually helped with the actual typography as well. And it's as simple as just adding the name or something that's en enough on the top canvas and having that fill out the space, but also the fact that the foreground photo of that person slam dunking and the, like the nice little sparks and such also playing a texture role. It feels very thoughtful. The the even the type texture on itself and the like, little line with the, the Nike symbol, it just feels dope. I honestly am very happy with what I got in front of me. And, you know, realistically, I think it's just, you know, I, I think it's good, but I could be wildly wrong to some of you. But to those people, I say I tried. And to the other people who enjoy it, I hope you guys enjoy it and you guys had maybe a little bit of fun, but also at the same time, learn something. Cause that's like the, the main part of this is I don't really know what I was going for, but at the end of the day, I, I did something. But yeah, if you guys haven't already, check out the first link in the description down below. It is the Everything Pack. Black Friday is coming up for the record. You can wait, but it's still well worth it. But with that, I'll talk to you guys later. Sets of HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling. Stay positive and stay freaking productive, guys. Later, much love, peace. Enjoy the rest of your day.